Emasculation is the removal of all pollen and anthers from the andresium. This prevents self-pollination of the new cross. Now would be a good time to tag the flower. A successful cross can only be repeated if we know exactly which parent donated the pollen and which parent formed the ovary. This information will also be needed if we want to register our new hybrid. So each cross will be labeled with the names of the two parent varieties, including which plant was the male, that is the pollen donator, abbreviated here with a M, and which was the female variety, or pollen recipient, noted here with a F. Only one unique pollen donor should be selected for each individual flower. The daylily flower stalk, called a scape, will hold many flowers blooming in sequence. We could even have multiple crosses on a single scape. So each flower on the scape could have a different pollen donor, which makes labeling even more important. To prevent accidental pollination, we should wash the pollen off of our hands before we make another cross using pollen from a different variety. In order to maintain the purity of our new cross, we need to isolate the flower from any new pollen source. No other pollen should contact the stigma before, during, or after we've hand pollinated our target flower. It's complicated trying to control all the possible sources of pollen. Pollen smudged on our fingers could easily rub off or fall off onto the stigma. Airborne pollen could be blown onto the flower and of course pollen can also be carried on the bodies of insects. Working in a greenhouse usually eliminates the chances of wind pollination, but unless the vents are very well screened, insects will usually fly in looking for nectar. Some insects also like to eat pollen. This beneficial hoverfly is chewing on some pollen and could easily spread this pollen when visiting other flowers.